Greetings, science people. It's me, Mr. Miller, again, and we're going to talk about our 10-2 cell part notes. So here we go. Well, let's first talk about the cell wall. What is the purpose of a cell wall? Well, first of all, we're going to find it in plant and bacteria cells, and it gives a cell its box-like shape that we sometimes will see. Now, its main purpose is to shape and protect that cell just like the outside wall of a mall is going to do. It's going to protect the contents of that mall. And that's its job, protection. Now, if we look here, you can see that wall, kind of a barrier around it, just like that. And it's located outside of what we call the cell membrane. Now, as we go through this video, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate all the cell parts back to that of a mall, something you guys are familiar with and you can relate to. That might make things a little bit easier to understand when we're talking about the different cell parts and the organelles here. All right, so what's the cell membrane? Well, think of the cell membrane as the boundary of the cell. It acts like a door or a fence, um, and it controls what enters and exits the cell. So food and water and waste and oxygen are constantly entering and exiting the cell. It's like the entrance to a mall that you have to pass through to get into the mall. All right, and you can kind of see an example of one down here. Um, this is the inside of the cell, this is the outside, and of course our wastes, our food, our water, and oxygen all travel back and forth through this, just like doors. Oh, cell organelles. You'll hear me talk about organelles. What are organelles? Well, organelle means little organs, and throughout our cell we have multiple uh, little organs, and they each have a specific function that they've got to do here. These are all our different organelles. You have the mitochondria, you have the, the endo endoplasmic reticulum, you have your Golgi apparatus, um, ribosomes, lysosomes, these are all specific little organs or organelles that have a function. Nucleus, we are familiar with nucleus. Uh, it is the control center of the cell. It's like the mall security, and there's a nice picture of Paul Blart there, and its job is to regulate and control the activities that are going on within the cell, just like within the shopping mall. It is the largest of the organelles that you're going to see, and it is visible under a microscope, and we'll get to see that when we actually pull out the microscopes, and there would be the nucleus right there. All right, it contains your DNA. What about ribosomes? Ribosomes are factories for proteins. Think of the ribosomes like the individual food that's sold at each of the restaurants in the mall, like the french fries, like the hamburger, like the hot dogs. Each food provides protein for shoppers. So that's what they are, factories for protein. They are little small grain-shaped organelles. They're just small, and they look like a little piece of grain. They're found or attached to the ER or floating in the cytoplasm, okay? So what is the cytoplasm? Well, there's a picture of cytoplasm right there. It's all this gel-like stuff that we see floating around. It's thick, it's clear, and it's gel-like fluid in which cell parts move and the cell activities take place, just like the hallways of a mall. So cytoplasm are like the hallways of the mall, where people move back and forth. Same thing here. Cell parts and activities are going back and forth throughout that cell, just like the people are moving throughout the mall. Mitochondria. Now this is a picture of a bunch of electric panels. Why? Because the mitochondria in the cell is like the powerhouse of the cell. It's providing all the energy. It's kind of this rod-shaped structure. It's bigger, and you can see it, and I'm looking here if I have one here. Uh, nope, not there. Let me look see if I got something here. Uh, right here, and you can probably see that. There's the mitochondria uh, in this particular cell up the top there. So rod-shaped structures, and their job is they're converting food into energy for the cell. It's just like the electrical system of the shopping mall, which supplies energy to the mall. Next part is called the endoplasmic reticulum. We oftentimes abbreviate this as the ER, aka ER, like I said. 
And here's a good picture of the endoplasmic reticulum. And that's what we're talking about, is these little things right here. Think of the endoplasmic reticulum as the elevator or the escalator of the cell. Uh, its job is to carry materials from one part of the cell to another. And it's like the escalators that are taking people up and down and throughout the mall and carrying supplies. Think of these guys. Uh, they're very close to the nucleus there. That's what you want to think of. They're right next to the nucleus, and they are the ERs. Now, what about the Golgi apparatus? The Golgi apparatus, these guys are the shippers of the cell. Think of them like a huge, giant warehouse or storeroom. And they look like a big stack of pancakes. And that's the Golgi apparatus, and I have them right here. Again, we we'll use the animal cell. There's the Golgi apparatus down at the bottom. It does look like just a stack of pancakes. Their whole purpose is to package and transport materials and move them throughout the cell. Lysosomes. What are lysosomes? Think of lysosomes as the garbage disposal of our cell. It's the cleanup crew. They're like the janitors of them all. They go around, clean up everything, and that's what lysosomes are doing. They're getting rid of all the mess, all the stuff that we don't need. What I tell students is think of lysosomes as Lysol. If mom's cleaning something around the house, she might use a can of Lysol to spray, clean up, and disinfect. And that's basically what lysosomes are doing. Breaking down our waste, and it's a sac-like organelle that's found in our animal cells. And if I look here, lysosomes, there they are again. It's that little purple one, if you can see that, on our cell, lysosomes. Vacuoles. What are our vacuoles? What's the main purpose of these guys? And this is a great example. You can just see that cell wall going around. And here is the vacuole. It's pretty large, OK? Now, it's the storage tank of the cell. It's a large central vacuole, usually in plant cells. So this would be a plant cell here because it's pretty big. Uh, but in animal cells, it's really small. There are a bunch of small vacuoles that are spread out. They are the storage container for water, food, and waste. Think of it like the water tanks and the pipes that are going throughout the mall. Chloroplasts. Well, first of all, chloroplasts are only going to be found in plant cells. They contain the green pigment chlorophyll. It's the site of food production, just like a pizza shop in the mall uh, that makes food for all the shoppers. That's what the chlorophyll is doing, uh, or the chloroplasts are doing. It's making food for that plant. It's capturing energy from that sunlight, turning it into food for the plant. Anything that you see here, this would be a good example, the green structures. Uh, that chlorophyll is what's making the plant green. So that's the purpose of the chloroplast, but it's only found in plant cells. So as a review, what is our main difference between the plant and animal cells? I mean, we've already covered all the organelles within our cells. But what is the main difference? Here's the three main differences between plant and animal cells. Plant cells have chloroplasts, which make them look green. Uh, they have a cell wall, which is right there. You can see that. They also have one large, giant vacuole uh, storage tank in the center of the cell. Now, when we go to animal cells, they have no chloroplasts whatsoever. They have no cell wall, which is why they're a little more blobby looking. And then finally, they have the many, many small vacuoles that are located throughout the cell. And that's your main difference. All right, we've just talked about all the organelles. Um, make sure you go back through and uh, rewatch this so you can answer the questions coming up on our post-assessment and our quiz.